Alrighty. Hello, everyone. Now, I'm very excited to be here. So, um, this, uh, this gets you to this, um, site here. And I'm going to play a little bit later. I'm going to play a tune. I have some uh, stuff that you can read through during that time. Um, and it's also, it says it in the notes here. So that's it. The URL is GNU Linux love. Okay. So what is free software? Free software, flow software, software that respects users' freedoms and human tech rights. What are our human tech rights? Everyone has a right to privacy, security, repair, internet, and speech. I have a list of music tools here. So, um, there's, you know, some newer tools as time goes on, like there's some things like electric guitar, for instance, that's not an old instrument. So there's a point at which, you know, uh, you can still play acoustic, right? But then um, there's tools where like technology, what I mean is there's music tools where technology is inevitable. And that's what I list over here. And that's when, you know, there's not really an acoustic. So speakers and microphones go to and from acoustic and electric um so um for there's a lot of modern music what we need to do is use a computer so um and then i'll talk about this skip fretting or skip tuning okay so there are countless proprietary tools and i'm not really going to talk about them much i'll talk focus on the the good tools so for music i'm using gnu linux the surge is a free open synth guitarix is for uh, distortion and other effects super looper works as a delay looper ardor is a digital audio workstation and musescore.org is a uh, free score editor so I wanted to give you a little bit of a background here of my journey through music technology. So I went through high school on GNU Linux. I had my own desktop computer and I dual booted. I got a ThinkPad right before I started at Ball State University in 2010 to study music. I dual booted, but rarely used Windows. I wanted to start using a DAW, which is a digital audio workstation. My friends were using Logic Pro. So here is a very common myth. If you want to do art, music, or media with a computer, you should get a Mac. And Mac OS is more common than both Windows and GNU Linux combined in the music industry. I don't have an exact statistic, so that's just from, you know, just being in the music industry and seeing everyone with Mac. Um, so GarageBand, Logic Pro, they are part proprietary DAW for Mac users, part malicious scheme by Apple for Apple, Apple Fender Lock-in. And the truth is, you know, it, it works. It's like, you know, um, people get locked in. So I didn't know better at the time as an eager music student wanting to learn more about music technology and wanting to get started with the DAW. I bought a brand new Mac Mini in 2012. I used Logic Pro as my primary DAW from 2012 to 2020. So I actually have that computer right here. And you might be wondering, why did I bring this to this conference? But I want to assure you, it's first of all running GNU Linux. <laughs> And second of, all, second of all, it's only doing the slides here. All the sound is coming from my other GNU Linux laptop over here. And also, I have on purpose not displayed the Apple logo. And I will put it away now face down. <laughs> OK. 
Oh, that's from my uh, hard drive. I'm going to... There. Okay, so, yeah. So the ThinkPad that I had that as my primary computer, the motherboard failed in 2015. I needed a new laptop. I was gifted a MacBook Pro, another Mac, right before I started my master of music degree at Ball State University in 2016. On that computer, the battery failed, the hard drive failed, and the charging cord. And what's interesting about the charging cord of Apple computers is they're both overpriced and they break. So um, that's a, it's like a double whammy. But of course, I kept the life of it going by being able to replace this myself from, I had a hard drive sitting around and uh, I ordered the battery off of eBay. Now, my MacBook Pro motherboard finally failed in 2020. I was relieved. I had a great excuse to stop using Mac as my primary computer and get a GNU Linux laptop. The whole time I had a MacBook Pro, I had this thought, well, I'm not going to dual boot. I'll just eventually get another laptop and use GNU Linux with that. Well, I didn't. So that's kind of my story. I was using a MacBook Pro as my primary computer for four years, and I'm so happy to not be doing that. What is GNU Linux? GNU Linux is a flow, which means free Libre open operating system. It is flow software license under GNU General Public License. GNU Linux is the greatest operating system of all time. What does it have to do with our human tech rights? Proprietary operating systems like Windows, Mac OS, and Chrome OS are built in such a way to ignore and exploit our human tech rights. Are human tech rights and music technology mutually exclusive? No. Can we use GNU Linux, the greatest operating system of all time, to make great music? Yes. So now I'm going to talk about a uh, kind of a more modern music technology. Matthew Autry discovered skip fretting more than a decade ago. It is a microtonal guitar fretting that allows you to play in larger edos, such as 41 edo and 72 edo. Every fret is a multiple of edo steps. Matthew has made instruments in 41, 53, 65, 72, 87, 118, 130, and 183 edo. Skip fretting is a revolutionary music technology which is flow and not patented. So, oh yes, you got a question? What, what? Yes, so um, it means equal vision the octave and it actually is down below because I know that I'm saying some terms that are new, but that I did make sure to uh, put some notes down below for, for some reading as I play this uh, keyboard over here. And uh, 12 Edo is the standard tuning of, of now. When you go to a music store, the instruments are filled with 12 divisions of the octave. Now, I did bring, I won't play this today, but I did want to show. So this is one of Matthew's instruments. This is 130 Edo. Each fret is four Edo steps. So the fretting is 32 and a half Edo. And that's because 32 and a half times four is 130. So across four strings is how you get all the notes of 130. What is a kite guitar? A kite guitar is a guitar with a skip fretting, kite getritis discovered in 2019. It is a 41 Edo skip fretted guitar from 20 and a half Edo fretting. Each fret is two Edo steps. Kite tuning is flow and not patented. This is over here.
this is from a Launchpad X, and I'm going to demonstrate it. Okay, so yeah, that's that. Um, I am going to be using a number of pieces of my own software today like that. And um, most of my use case for software is I got this problem and I got to solve it and I finally solved it for myself. And my point is that all my software is below at the bottom. There's a zip of it, but I mean, just be aware that it comes with a caveat that like it's not well documented and uh, it's still a work in progress. But the software to make the colors as well as to play those notes is down below. So my friend Jim Snow made a keyboard. And uh, what's cool about this keyboard is that every key on it is the frequency ratios are listed on the keys. So this is just a, I mean, I wish there were more instruments like this. There just aren't, but it's actually, it's basically not in the Edo system. It's in the frequency ratio system. So I'm gonna be playing a tune here. I originally wrote this tune for kite guitar the score can be found there. The score and playback was made with musescore.org. I'm going to play a modified version of the source code today on Jim Snow's keyboard. This music is Flow Software. As I play, read below to get caught up on some basic and fundamental microtonal theory written for all. My text does not assume previous music training or experience. Here's that question about what an Edo is. That's the next one. So meet me back here. Meet me back at the section titled Back to Computers.
Nice. All right. So, Ode to Creative Commons, a protector of free information. If you, if we have questions, we can go back over some of this stuff. You know, so don't, don't worry. Okay, back to computers. <clears throat> Above. I describe the importance of the harmonic series. I have mentioned Aristoxenus, Ptolemy, and Pythagoras. These are ancient Greek philosophers. Though these notes are so old and based on the harmonic series, few musicians can play them. We need tools to help us out. There is an unsettling amount of proprietary music tools all around us. People just assume that any given music tool is proprietary. This is evident just from how many musicians are trapped in the Apple world. Musicians who don't use Mac OS often instead use Windows. 
Now, as more and more people are learning about where 12 Edo falls short, we are seeing more and more software released for untwelled tuning. Let us take a moment and ask ourselves, should we be trapped by non-free software tools just to experience notes that are decades, centuries, or millennia old? Do we need non-free software to experience notes that are not from Western music tradition? Do we have to give up our human tech rights just to use music technology at all? Absolutely not. What is the next step? We need to know about and tell people about flow tools. This is the chart that I, that I had up there earlier. GNU Linux, Surge, Guitarix, Superlooper, Ardor, MuseScore.org. And then here's a link to the source code. All right, oops. Flow software is democracy of the future. Together, we can liberate technology. GNU Linux loves all. Now, I will take a moment to um, describe in more detail some of these things. So I wanted to talk quickly about a uh, delay looper. And Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about some hardware tools. So, um, uh, guitar pedals. Um, I've been using them for a long time, and I mean they work great with violin. I use them more often with violin. So here's a delay pedal, and and uh, this one here. Oops. So this one is a looper. And one thing I want to say is what basically happens is it repeats. And it can repeat once, multiple times, or like it decays as it goes on. And so one important thing about delays and loopers is that, you know, there's a crossover. They're the same thing. You can turn this into a delay pedal. You can have, you know, just one repeat. Uh, on this, turn down the feedback, and then it's a it's a looper. Now, one thing that's not great about this pedal is the decay time is so short that it doesn't work great as a looper. So, um, but the the general idea is that the two work together it, are the same thing. So, then next, I'll talk. Let's see here. So now this is a distortion, and it does say bass on it. Now at the very high notes, it you know, well I actually use it for violin. I've used this pedal for a long time, so it still works even though it, it says bass on it. Um, and uh, these these tools are um, the pedals in general are pretty you know relatively pricey compared to a computer you can find in a closet, and um, so that's kind of what, what I'm getting at here is, well, the next thing I actually have to talk about is a focus or a USB audio interface. So this is what how basically you get um, sound to and from the computer. And this is an important step if you're trying to do music with a computer. Now, there is a, a really big issue with for some reason, like all these companies that are that are making these, you know, hardware like this, they're, I mean, it's pretty weird. They, uh, they for some reason don't always like to list GNU Linux as an option or that it even exists, which is weird because, like I said, it's greatest operating system of all time. You know, it's like we need, we need to be able to use good tools on good operating systems that respect our human tech rights. So when, what I want to say about um, interfaces specifically is if you're looking for an audio interface, make sure it's class compliant because um, 
for some reason, companies are not, uh, they go to make, if they make a driver, they make it for Windows and Mac first and um, sometimes forget about, you know, our great friend. Um, but if you get it USB class compliant, that means you can plug it in. So for instance, the Scarlett Focusrite, if you look on their website, it doesn't mention GNU Linux, but since it is uh, USB, so you don't need to download a driver, so it's not operating system specific, and that's what you should be looking for if you're to get um, interface. So then this essentially becomes a uh, pedal like like that does over there, and this is a great way to to be able to um, experience experience pedals without having to buy every single one. And that's where that's something that is where a plus of computers comes in, where we can we can um, experience these without having to you know these are a lot of money. And um, oh, I didn't. So well, actually. This uh, this one here, new when I bought it used off of eBay, I think over three hundred dollars um, uh, many years ago, and new I think is five hundred. This one over here, Strymon Big Sky. I've had this for almost ten years. I bought it new for five hundred dollars, and this is a reverb pedal. And what I have found. Um, that I got excited about is a way to use Surge for reverb because eventually I still use pedals when I'm performing and I still have a pedal board, but also it depends on the kind of music I'm doing, but because sometimes I go straight into this. Um, and um, more and more I'm looking to basically not use pedals and have a, a, a recreatable system you know, where in most importantly, it's not it's not an Apple computer, you know, it's like it's it's just something that you can plug in and then it's free software and you can, you know, put it on the computer you find in your laptop or I mean, in your in your closet. So that's a that's a goal of mine. Um, so. Uh, and I've done that with distortion and delay and uh, and then reverbs the next one because then I can say I that you don't need this for reverb basically. That's that's kind of my point there. I have in 2018 I built where uh oh I don't have it here. Uh, I just have it right here. I built this this tool in 2018. This is a USB MIDI interface. The code for that is also in the zip file, and um, it runs, it's just, uh, so you can use the Arduino IDE to program this, and some of the things I haven't gotten around to doing yet is making it so that it shows up as a USB MIDI device as soon as you, you know, plug it into the computer. Um, and also software serial, it's, uh, when you use software serial, you can't read and write at the same time, which is important if you want to write a MIDI message and read one at the same time. So MIDI is a serial, um, is a, is a, it uses serial to send it over um, and, and back. And then of course with, you know, something like this, this is a Wemos D1 Mini. It's a $4 board, super accessible, and it has Wi-Fi on it. Um, and it has, just the RX and TX pins for serial. It just has one serial port, and that's used for the USB. So actually, what I did was I included a driver that um, takes that reads from the device, and then and then um, turns it into MIDI messages on the computer. And I have here um, this. Uh, I will use this to tune one note. This is a tuner, and there's so many, like, tuners just, they default to, you know, 12 Edo, and so what it means is, you know, you can't necessarily use them as a tool to, to learn the harmonic series. What's important to see where this comes in is there's two ways to count up, basically. And it's a 
uh, you know, by a multiple. And one is hertz, right? So you count up by one hertz each time or 100 cents each time, you know, or a multiple. And that's what I'm showing over here. So this over here, each note is plus 110 hertz. And over here, each note is, um, so this is um, actually correlating from here. So th what happens is the first one is 1200, the next one 700. It's going to the closest, but each, what I mean is that each cent here is a multiple of 100. That's the point is that you quantize the, you know, this grid into cents. And so that's where what happens is our nice looking Hertz numbers, all of a sudden, any octave, any note that says A is gonna be a nice looking number. And this is what the Edo means, is basically any multiple of two, the frequency ratio that those are, that's, that is the same in both systems. But then um, anything else is always irrational. Um, you, when you have you know any other prime number, three, five, seven, and so that's kind of the difference between the two. And so they're both essential because when you play piano, you play a single note, out comes a chord of harmonics. It actually isn't using the 12-tone system. It's using the system that the ancient Greek philosophers were talking about. And that's why it is essential. Like, it's just how music works. That's why it's important to learn about it. And, you know, it's just we're a lot of people don't have the tools to necessarily um, learn learn about them. Now, what I used to help me learn was, I mean, Kai guitar, the, this sense, I mean, I already knew how to, I already, what do I mean? It was more practice, because once you learn the system, you can translate. It doesn't matter so much, you know, the route you take you know, is because eventually you get to the same place and not even the Edo. If you, you know, let's say for some reason you want to start with 72 Edo instead of 41, there's a translation between the two. And so, um, but um, so, yeah, anyway, that's, that's the point there. So I want to say about distortion, delay, the reason I brought those up specifically is that that's a great way to get started with this, is that delay is, you know, used by, uh, you use that to turn a monophonic instrument, that only plays one note, turn it into a polyphonic instrument. And that way, it's always easier with this when you're working against a drone or a second note. That's how you can hear the notes and then once you put that through distortion, also distortion, it richens, is, distortion is a just intonation harmonic series device. What it does is you send it a sine wave, it makes it more complex, it adds harmonics. So then when you have two notes together, it will show better the, um, the it'll show better when they're lined up by frequency ratios. That's what I mean is that it'll sound dirtier if if you're not getting a good alignment and when you do it sounds cleaner and so that's specifically why i mentioned those two effects distortion and delay is that you can use those to um to learn the system also surge as well it has a way that you can tune the notes by you can put in um a custom tuning so when you plug in a keyboard then you can just get started with um with putting in frequency ratios. And then of course, when you have a sound, you run a filter over it, well, it's already doing, it's already going up the harmonic series scale, is that it ice, when you put resonance on it, then you're going through the harmonic series, you're hearing the sounds, and, and then it's almost like you are getting notes of the harmonic series, and that's another, uh, reason why this is so essential to learn and so um it wasn't actually until after a long time that i was you know it said basically you know 2020 that i was playing up the harmonic series because you in standard music education you're just not being taught this you go to surge you do a, a frequency sweep you hear this scale that we're just not being taught at this time of how to play. And so that's why I'm getting at 
uh, these different ways to use these tools to learn how how to how to experience all this. Okay, so I think that's about enough. So now I'm sure there's a lot of questions. So yeah, feel free to ask. <laughs> all right, Tristan. All right, so I have so those uh, pedals and things. A lot of them have, but a lot of them are digital pedals, which means that in those pedals there exists some firmware. Now that that firmware isn't really open source, is it? Because that firmware hasn't been publicly, um, it, it hasn't been publicly released anywhere. I mean, maybe you could like flash the the um, little flash chips on there and try and decompile the, the the firmware code or something. But there is at if you're if um, I, I was wondering if you knew about tools like the Mod Duo X, which I believe is a like an effect pedal, but it it's I believe the firmware is open source. Mm -hmm. All right, so good question, and I did want to talk a little bit about what I talked about today was mostly focused on software because, of course, you know that's another part about it is hardware. So. Of course, you know, this laptop, this interface, and um, other other tools, the hardware just, you know, unfortunately, like we want open source hardware, but then of course we see that there's just so much that's closed source. And so, um, yeah, because the open, I mean, open source is a way. It's the best, it's, it's the best, it makes a product better, basically, is once you release the source code. Um, but um but uh yeah i think a laptop is a good kind of comparison like we're using laptops how many laptops are open source hardware you know it's just we're that's another another talk uh uh you know in and of itself um but um what i did want to say about the you know going backwards before computers is you got to think is that we've you know, we've been dealing with proprietary hardware before computers, and the pedals are a good example. Um, you know, uh, when we, the first guitar pedals that we started using, um, there's just a trend, you know, for, for some reason, people ha have this idea that once you make a cool technology, you should not release the hardware or the software. That's the, you know, what the, what we're, you know, going up against. However, the positive side of it is that what once you have software, all of a sudden you have something where you don't have to even recreate uh, another device of hardware. It's essentially free to copy software. And software is the sense now we have a way with these tools. That's the positive thing is now we have a way to get more accessible through software. We have more accessibility for for the tools, and that's why you know, we should have free, free software tools because, because then, you know, it makes it more accessible and it's, and it doesn't actually cost more to make another one. Okay, Devin. So, uh, and I, I just went to the Berkeley College of Music, or Berkeley College of Music's website to verify this. Um, one of the requirements for tinkering students uh, is, you know, uh, hardware, which includes like a Mac uh, computer and uh, software, which includes a whole host of proprietary software. Um, given your experience, what do you what do you think of this like policy? Okay, so I would like to say when I was in music school, uh, there's this weird thing where, well, first of all, at the University of All, there like you go to public computers, right? There's Windows and Mac. They don't just have GNU Linux computers at the university, which I think is not cool. Um, but then in the music studio, uh, where you know I learned about music technology at, at Ball State, it was it's all Macs everywhere. And you know what's weird about that is I would comment about that um, to people, and then they look at me like I'm weird. Uh, 
And so, yes, it is, it is, you know, it is a problem that we're, we're dealing with. And that's, and the idea is that there are alternatives. So that's why when you have a flow software alternative, you should use that because even if it needs uh, more development, more work, anything that happens with that, it's free for everyone forever. And they're just, and that inherently makes it a better tool. And, um, unfortunately, like, actually I got another, uh, another great example for one of, one of my grad student, um, uh, classes, we were required to send a doc X format for a paper. And of course that was something I thought was super lame, but I, uh, I didn't take the time to explain this to the professor. Instead, I use the uh, free windows, you know, free in quotes. What they give to students is they give you access to Microsoft Office when you're a student at no cost. And of course, you know, I take advantage of that, download that for my docx and then, uh, you know, and try to avoid that. But you see there's the university is just filled with this problem and education in general is that people just, they think that, oh, this is the way we got to use these tools. And they just assume that proprietary is the way. And so as far as what you mentioned, well, I'm glad I already completed my music school and that I'm not up against that because, um, that sounds, you know, like, uh, like a bad time. Yes. Okay, music inspiration. So, you know, really is so diverse. Um, like from so many backgrounds, you know, and of different music I've studied over time. Classical was what kind of why I started, and that's what my degree was focused on. But then of course jazz. And then um and then um non Western music. I'm inspired by African music, Indian music, and Middle Eastern music. And I've been learning more about that. My, you know, Kaid actually has been, he's a pro African. He, he went to Africa and studied there for almost two years and, um, and has been teaching me a lot about my knowledge of African music. Uh, so it's, you know, basically that all blends together. Uh, and, and yeah, that's, I don't know there. <laughs> Yes. What's the mean score? Like, is that natively these like basic scores for like non relative something? Not natively. So on that uh, score that I have, I use Muse Score, but I actually put in the pitch bend for every message. Now there are there is a plugin that you can use. I didn't use it to set for a, a certain Edo. Um uh but and um but you uh so anyway, there's it's uh it's not native, but I did actually since you brought up Muse Score, I real quickly wanted to say is that there is an issue with Muse Score, and that is the name relates to both MuseScore.org and MuseScore.com, which are completely different things. So when I talk about, and that's why I said MuseScore.org, because someone says, "Oh, Muse Score, I love that," and then you realize they're talking like for me default like the score editor because that's what I use and they're talking about musescore.com which is, you know, a a way it's basically just like a a lock-in thing to make, you know, for for people to upload scores in a closed system for uh you know, it's just like a completely different thing. I'm into free open source software and and information and so that's why I use, say, uh, musescore.org. I'm familiar with like normal sheet music, but like, I'm an example of where you might get score for that. So on my link for Ode to Creative Commons, I have a PDF up there, uh, and you can read read the PDF. And I also have playback from from musescore from the tune playback, uh, and. Um, I would click it right now, except for I've been having internet trouble, and right before the talk, I was copying images over because I couldn't access my website, and that was uh, uh, um, very exciting, to say the least, up to the last minute.
but feel free to check check out that for some sheet music. Okay, yeah. It's this one is a prototype. Jim's keyboard is a prototype. He's, you know, developing it. Uh, it's not, you know, necessarily released yet, but um, he's done me a huge favor to, you know, I've he he gave this one to me like almost a year ago, probably. And I've been spending time on it. Um, uh, a lot of my knowledge of these of, of music comes from instruments that people have loaned me like this math matthew's loaned me a lot of instruments kai's loaned me instruments um and uh i have i'm very grateful to all those because it's it's been uh you know it's been good for me and the other it goes the other way i'm loaning instruments to people i because you know i just don't get around someone needs it more and so i you know it's just and i don't have room for it so um yeah all right maybe last question yeah it, um, is the way that he works or keys are laid out on the new keys, is that some type of physical representation of how the harmonics, the different waveforms overlay over? What is that? Why are they or, that way? Yeah, I'll uh, actually I'll bring it down here. So that's a good question. They there's some rows, uh, basically. So. The middle row, every so when you're in just intonation, you look at the prime numbers as a way to group group them together. So you take a prime, and then each row going this way is is either times a three or divided by three. Um, well, within reason. So four over three, three's on the bottom. Three over two, it's on the top. So going this way, that's the way to orient everything. So the three row is in the middle. Five over row is here, um, so everything is five over, and then same thing. It's it's the same, you know, the if you're going up or down a three over two, for instance, and then seven over rows here, seven under row is here, five under row is here, and so that's so you see like um, this one is you yeah this one and this one and. So they're kind of like, you know, of course you cross over like the seven under, but the five under, five under, seven under, seven under, um, that's how, that's how it's organized. Okay. It's, it's, I think it's time. So yeah. Thanks a bunch. <laughs>